Hello everybody, this is DDP back with another edition of Mavs Post Game, and tonight we are talking Dallas 112, Indiana 103. Yes, the Mavericks continued their road warrior ways, picking up yet another big win on the road this year, and doing it once again without Luka Doncic uh, available to them. This is a really big win for the Mavericks here, and you know what? They've had a lot of statement wins this year on the road, particularly against the Eastern Conference. Now, obviously, we know they lost at Boston. We know they lost at New York. Ouch. Uh, we know they blew a historic lead in Toronto. Those three suck. However, they also won at Milwaukee without Luka, at Philadelphia without Luka, and now they just won at Indiana. This is an Indiana team that's still pretty, pretty good. And they got Victor Oladipo back recently. And uh, let me check this here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. 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 Now, he's still working his way back in. He didn't have a great shooting night, and he came off the bench for them, but he just came back. Point is, it's a guy that can give them a bit of a lift. And before his injury, was like their best player, pretty much. So, this is a quality win for the Mavericks. And a big part of this win was a certain unicorn. Kristaps Porzingis plays his best game of, of his young Mavericks career, dropping 38 points and 12 rebounds in 36 minutes on 10 of 20 from the field, 6 of 13 from beyond the arc, and a perfect 12 of 12 at the charity stripe. That is remarkable production from Kristaps Porzingis, and it's his second straight game with at least 35 and 10, I think 35 and 12 even, um, if I'm thinking of that correctly, and that would make him the first Maverick, there's three Mavericks who have accomplished that, let me, let me, before I put my foot in my mouth here, allow me to properly quote this here, this is from Bob, Bobby Corella on Twitter, only players in Mavs history with back-to-back -back games of at least 35 points and 10 rebounds, Dirk, Doncic, and now Porzingis. How appropriate is that? That is crazy fitting uh, of an accomplishment there. But what's even more is that KP in games this year, when he has had to step up in the absence of Luka Doncic, he is averaging 28.7 points per game and 14 rebounds. That's in the wins. Let me, let me recontextualize that. I misspoke. That's the wins at... Philadelphia, at Milwaukee, and here. In these three major wins on the road against the Eastern Conference, KP has balled out. Now, if you want to look at what he's done, you know, what he's done in this game, it's really impressive how he's been able to really find his stroke a little bit. Yeah, 6 of 13 from 3. You knock down 6 threes, that's pretty impressive, but... His shot was there. His shot was falling. He had 20 points at halftime. He had like 11 of the first 20 for the Mavericks as a team. He was hitting threes early on in this game, and it really opened things up for Dallas. And, you know, that's that's really good for them. The fact that it was KP and the other former Nick, Tim Hardaway Jr., leading the Mavericks, really the only two Mavericks to do a hell of a lot. Dorian Finney-Smith had himself a great game, too with 15 and 11, 15, 11 and four. Got to call that out on four of eight shooting three of four from beyond the arc and a four of four at the line. But Tim Hardaway Jr. Chips in 25 points, four boards and five assists as well on nine of 17 shooting four of eight from beyond the arc. Now, what I was starting to quote earlier about KP, he is the last Maverick since uh, the first Maverick, I should say, since Dirk Nowitzki to go a perfect 12 of 12 at the line in a game for the Mavericks, at least 12 of 12 in, at the line. KP has been a little bit shaky at times this year at the free throw line, but this was a really strong game for him in that regard. And he was hitting big free throws down the stretch. When the Pacers kept cutting into the lead, cutting into the lead, they got it down to three a couple times. KP would get fouled. He'd go to the line. He'd knock down the free throws. I mean, those are big free throws. At one point, he extends the game to seven, by getting uh by knocking down his free throws and it kept it a three possession game which was huge for dallas with about a minute 12 left at that point so kp man he deserves a lot of credit now for indiana 
they actually outshot Dallas in the game, 46% compared to 42%. But Dallas knocked down 18 of its 45 threes for 40% from beyond the arc. Indiana only 7 of 34, so not nearly as good, 21% for them. Free throws, Dallas, 22 of 23 as a team. In fact, I'm now interested, who missed? Jalen Brunson missed a free throw. That's the only Maverick to miss a free throw in this game. 22 of 23. That is what you have to do in these big games on the road. You have to be able to knock down critical free throws. And Dallas did it in this game. They knocked down, they got to the line at will. Indiana shot just 11 free throws by comparison. 8 of 11 for Indiana, 73%. Dallas doubles up, makes... So Indiana shot 11, Dallas doubled that up in just makes alone with 22 makes out of 23. That is your difference there because Indiana only committed four turnovers in the game. Dallas, it's pretty much season average, 12. Indiana really protected the ball well here. They out-assisted Dallas 28-20. to uh, Dallas wins on the glass 51-40, to including 12 offensive boards compared to eight. Indiana, though, gets six blocks compared to two for Dallas. Much more Indiana 7 3 in the steals department. Fouls were about even. Indiana commits three more fouls. I mean, this is really this is really a game about the three-point shooting and the free throws. The free throws were a major one. KP, fantastic game. His best scoring game as a Maverick. 38 points. He's rolling right now, and that's really, really cool to see. I'm, I'm rejecting all notion of people saying this team is better without Luka because no the hell it's not. What you can say is Luka and KP, we still need to figure that out a little bit. I understand we've had about 50 games now, but we need to figure that out a little bit because when you get the two of them working in lockstep, this team is going to be nigh unguardable because KP, as good as our team has been at times this year, KP has largely operated as the, the Robin to Luka's Batman here. If KP can roll this kind of production out, he's basically, you know, a different, he's, he's a different Batman at that point. It's Batman 1 and Batman 2, or it's the Dark Knight and it's, uh, you know, the I was going to say the Christian Bale Batman. When I said Dark Knight, I was thinking of a different, uh, I guess I was thinking more so of Batman animated series, honestly. But regardless, you get the idea. This is a team with a very high ceiling. And when they play up to that level, they can beat anybody. When they don't, it can be a little hard to watch. But this is a team that's young and has particularly young superstars. And so they're going to have to learn how to do that. As I mentioned earlier, in those three key wins on the road in the Eastern Conference, at Milwaukee, at Philadelphia, and now at Indiana, KP has been averaging over 28, nearly 29 points a game. Now, my prediction coming into the season... It looks like a bad prediction right now because KP, I don't know his number, his average off the top of my head. It's probably something like 17 or so. I predicted KP would actually lead the team in scoring going into the year. I figured that KP would be around 26, 27 points and that Luka would be sitting around 23, 24. But that was with the assumption that Luka would be more of the distributor, whereas he has still largely remained option 1A in terms of scoring. So I get it, but... I think you can bring up that KP number for sure because if you look at the number of shot attempts he's getting per game, if he just starts hitting two or three more shots per game, that 17 is going to turn into 24, 25 points instead. So big possibilities there for this team. I'm very pleased with all of that. Uh, Shout out as well for the Pacers. He finally got his long-term deal before the year started, but it was a guy that I said I would basically sell not the farm for but i would definitely give the world nearly for i love demontis sabonis 37 minutes for him 26 points 12 rebounds nine assists a near triple double from the young kid and he's 11 of 18 from the field he's got range he can stretch it and he only shot one three in the game and he missed it but he's got range he can stretch the floor he is i i understand that victor olodipo was the prime prospect they got in the deal with Oklahoma City for Paul George a couple years ago but real talk now that Oladipo has had this injury you know hopefully he can come back and be kind of the player he was before it but Sabonis is damn good like I I was actually as a as a casual OKC fan 
I was actually a little disappointed to lose Sabonis because I really saw something in him in his year in Oklahoma City. And uh, yeah, now you see him what he's turning into, and it's kind of impressive. It's kind of a guy you'd like to have on your team, but it is what it is. Miles Turner, sounds like he might be potentially on the trade market here soon. 11-5 and five from him, not nearly as memorable. That's 34 minutes and 11-5. and five. That doesn't That doesn't grab me very much. But uh, very balanced scoring from the Pacers. Pretty much everyone who played in this game gave them at least six. And, you know, they're a good team. I, I still stand by that. Let me see here as I check now. We were only a half game up on the Thunder coming in. The Pacers are the five seed. Basically the same record as us. They're 31 and 19 now. The Mavericks now are 31 and 19 as well. But the Mavericks sit in sixth place in the Western Conference. Uh, a half game behind the Rockets once again. So we'll see where they stand there. Oklahoma City is still breathing down our neck, though. For the moment, we got a full game lead. But OKC's not playing tonight, I don't believe. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But this is a quality win, guys. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. I'm going to do my best to keep giving you these post games as often as I can. As I've said before, I am juggling a full-time school schedule and a full-time work schedule. And uh, still trying to do this kind of side business on the... Uh, whatever limited free time I have on top of that. So that's going to do it for my time, though. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, every legend was once a prospect. Peace. Thanks, I hate it.